Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator, the Motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey that we call life. Guys, if you're tuning in today, you have come to the end of this month's journey into the Cardinal Virtues, uh, as uh, written by uh, John Tyson's book, The Intentional Father, uh, a practical guide to raise sons of courage and character. I encourage you guys to all to get this book, especially men, read it, read it put it into practice. Um, it's not, I'm not going to say it's one of those like life changing books, but it's one that definitely gives you another perspective. It gives you tools and resources on how to specifically be intentional with your sons to raise them to be contributing members of society and to in, instill that sense of, of leadership in, in them and for them to always be able to come back to you uh, as, as kind of their, their guide and their mentor. So it's how to be a good father, but also how to raise good sons. Okay. So definitely check out the book. We're going to continue our discussion on the four uh, masculine virtues. We've already talked about wisdom. We've talked about self-control. We've talked about courage. Tonight, we're going to talk about justice. So I hope that you uh, continue on this journey with me. If you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble or Odyssey, please subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever, please share the show. That's how the show grows. Check out the Three Pillars Podcast website in case you guys didn't know. i got a blog over there. I try to do a weekly um, a weekly blog that kind of goes along with some of the episodes that we've done before, kind of expands upon them a little bit, a little bit more, and just kind of whatever's on mind for the week. So definitely check out the Three Pillars Podcast website. Also go over to Good Pods right now. Um, make an account. The links down in the description below. Good Pods is like Goodreads. If you're into podcasting, you listen to them often. You listen to this show often. Create a little account. Rate the show. Rate each episode. Leave a comment. You know we'll get to know each other better over there. So wherever you're at. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the housekeeping stuff aside, come find me, Three Pillars Podcast, Chase Tobin. We're going to talk about justice tonight. What is justice? What does that mean? What is a life of justice? What is a life without justice? What is the opposite of justice? All these things coming up at you very soon. So, all that aside, we're going to begin with a quick word of prayer as always, and we're going to dive right in. Good to go. Let us pray. Father God, Lord of mercy, the prime example of justice in our lives. The principle of justice being the moderation between selfishness selfishness and selflessness. That's what justice is, fair, being fair, but being firm. Lord, thank you for corralling us. Thank you for correcting us. Thank you for disciplining us when we need it. Thank you for giving us talents and skills and resources to give to others and to put forth in this world just your love, goodness, and mercy but also being able to drive out the wickedness and the oppressiveness of the world, that we can just be your emissaries here on earth. Lord, I ask you to be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this, the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. All right. In Tyson's book, okay, we talk about justice. What is it? It's going to help us. It's a virtue that's necessary for us to embody courage and put this, this, this character building that we've done over the past month, as it were, and put it into place. Justice is a cornerstone. Okay. It is truly, it's a moral principle and it determines our conduct and our just conduct. It's not just fairness. It's not just a pursuit of what's right and what is good. It is really, it helps us to drive out oppression. It helps us to have a, have a guiding principle in our lives and having a moral compass and having a, an ethical compass and, and how to preside over our families, preside over our communities, whatever we have control of and not control that we're trying to be oppressive, but that our sphere of influence can be ordered and just and rid of chaos and rid of disorder and rid of uh, oppression and, um, just evil, as it were, okay? We're going back to Proverbs 31, verses 2 through 9. I'm just going to read it again because we hadn't read it in a couple weeks. Um, it says, listen, my son, listen, son of my womb, listen, my son, to the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the, all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. 
Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Again, that's Proverbs 31, verses 2 through 9. In this section, he writes, and I quote, Care about the rights of the destitute. Defend the poor and the needy and make sure proper judgment happens in the land. Just echoing what it says in Proverbs. That's our mission, is to have the courage to put this into action. To see that there is uh, wickedness in the world. To see that there is oppression in the world. And to rid the world of it and to bring order and to lift people up out of the mire and the muck. Jesus advocated for the oppressed. He created space for the outcasts and confronted hypocrisy in the systems of his day. Whether it was turning over tables or welcoming tax collectors, he was working, working to make the world reflect the fair and just values of the kingdom of God. He welcomed people to the, t to the table. He wants us to be men of value. He wants us to be, be like him. To quote Tyson again, can you imagine what would happen in your, if your son, if he were inspired and equipped to live like this in these challenging times, the times that we're living in right now? If you could give him a strong moral compass, if you could teach him what it means to be just and to be fair and to be righteous. Okay? We're going to get into that today. We're going to talk about justice. We're going to talk about the opposite of justice, which is oppression. And we're going to talk about what happens when you have too much of one and not enough of the other and what happens and, and, and as, as the world devolves into chaos. And now we can bring it back into order. So why is justice important? Justice is a critical virtue for several reasons. First, it provides us a foundation for moral integrity and ethical behavior. Justice ensures that individuals act in accordance with what is right, fair, and equitable. Again, Tyson emphasizes that justice is, is it's crucial for developing character. Our role as fathers includes teaching our sons to be just, preparing them to face the challenges of life with fairness and integrity, doing the right thing when nobody's looking, being able to take a situation, take information from this side, information from this side, discerning what is the truth and determining what, determining what is fair, and not fair just based off of equity, fair based off of just solid principles. Think about uh, Solomon when he had the two women come to him, and uh, one woman had obviously had, had gotten drunk and rolled over on her child and killed it, and she stole the, uh, the child uh, from the other woman, and they brought the woman in front of Solomon, and Solomon said, okay, what do you want me to do about this? Well, this is my, this is my child, this is my child. Okay, well, take the child, we're going to chop the child in half, and you get one half, and you get the other. And the one woman said, no, 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 that's... That's, it's, it's her child, it's fine. And the other woman that was just, yeah, yeah, it's my child, blah, blah, blah. Solomon knew that a, a mother would not give up her child to be dead, to, to be killed. So he knew that the woman who was ready to give up the child was actually the mother, right? Taking the information from both sides, being discerning, using your wisdom, having self-control, having the courage to make the right decision, even though it might be a hard decision to make. That is something that leaders lack sometimes in the world is making decisions. Or, or not making decisions because you think it might hurt somebody's feelings or somebody's not going to like you or something like that, okay? You have to be a judge. You have to have justice. You have to know what is fair, what is right, what is equitable, what is um, having the integrity to do, to do that, uh, to make that decision. Justice is also vital for social harmony and community well-being. It's going to build up trust in your community. It's also going to foster cooperation between different groups within your community or whatever your sphere of influence might be. When you create this environment, people are going to thrive because they know that you're being just, you're being righteous, you are doing what's generally best for them. And again, in your sphere of influence, if they can trust you with that, they're going to perform. You're going to have a more optimal uh, society, right? In Micah 6, 8, it states, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. In this verse, it's really just emphasizing the fact that acting justly is a fundamental requirement for being righteous in your life. So to define justice, let's get here. I got to pull it up over here. So it truly is. It is the moderation or it is the mean between selfishness and selflessness, between having more or having less than one's fair share. So it's really just trying to keep you on that straight and narrow path. And to, to, to really find balance and harmony at the end of the day, because you don't want to lean too far one way or the other. You want to stay on the path of righteousness. You want to keep yourself focused on, on your lane, but you also don't want to um, be too biased to one side or the other because of favors or things like that. Somebody slips you a dollar and says, okay, hey, can you make this decision more in my favor? Think about the different judges and things that are out there. 
It's a high seat of power. They, they call them justices for a reason. So it's, it's a high seat of power, and you've got a lot of authority. But people in high places can become corrupt. Lord Acton was right. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So having a strong foundation in the Lord, having a strong foundation with wisdom, courage, self-control, you're also going to be able to be live a just life because... You have that again, that solid foundation that is Jesus, and you're gonna have a stronger moral compass. Okay. So that guy justice upholds the dignity and worth of every individual in your little sphere of influence. It ensures that people are treated with respect and that people are given their due rights. Justice opposes discrimination and prejudice. It promotes equality and fairness. Again, not equity, there's a difference. We want to give everybody an equal opportunity. We want everybody to have an equal opportunity to be heard. But we also want to make sure that they're that they have their, their rights and that again that they're heard. But we also want to make sure that they uh, we're not just doing it just because. There has to be something that you bring to the table as well. I will hear this issue that you've got going on. I'm not, not, not looking for gain or anything like that in return, and I'm not doing it just because I owe you. I'm doing it because I have respect for you and I want you to be heard, and not just because you're going to come up asking me for stuff just to make a decision because you can't be accountable uh, to your own actions. Proverbs 21.3, to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So that's a huge theological concept right there because, you know, sacrificial system was what was in play um, all throughout the Old Testament. That's how people thought that they were, were going to be completely absolved of all their sins. But what does it say right there? To do what is right and just is more acceptable than to the Lord than sacrifice. Just, just throwing stuff on the altar and going through the motions actually doing what is right when nobody's looking, not just on the day of atonement, doing what is right when nobody's looking, not just when you need something from God, but always doing the, the right thing because it's good for you. It's good for your community. It's good for your family. And mostly it's uh, right by the Lord. Okay. This is why you have, it's so important to live a just and a righteous life. So what happens when we lack justice? Again, just like with the rest of the episode, it's detrimental. It's, it's absolutely horrendous when you have, when you lack some of these things both for you and as and your community. When you lack justice, you're more likely to engage in unfair and unethical behavior. This lack of fairness and lack of justice results in personal and social harm. It damages your relationships and it diminishes your overall quality of life. If you don't have justice, you might slip into oppression and you start uh, exploiting other people because you have some seat of power. People have elevated you and they trust your judgment. Okay? But if somebody gets wins, okay, what is his weakness? What can I do? Is it women? Is it money? Is it power? What is it that I can get to him to lean the decisions more in my favor? And you see this all across the globe all the time. This lack of, uh, without this justice, you're going to, it's eventually going to cause social unrest because people see the blatant bias that you have. You have to try to maintain a neutral tone. You're erring on the side of good, obviously. But if it's just a, it's, it's just a neutral arm, argument, you always favor one side, like an umpire in a in a baseball game, right? Always favoring the batter and never favoring the pitcher. So it's just become a neutral uh, ump. You know, that's going to cause people, ah, oh, they're going to start getting, oh, oh, man, this ump, God, get him out of here, blah, blah. We got this guy again. We're never going to win. Like, it starts causing a little bit of discord, right? Dissonance. In Isaiah 10, 1 through 2, Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor, the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. This scripture, again, talks about the dangers of unjust behavior and the importance of being just and upholding justice. Because if you start taking advantage of the, of the poor and the needy, the people that need you most, people are going to see that and they're going to, the, the, the trust and the, um, the elevation that you've gotten to show is going to start to diminish and your, your foundation is going to crumble because you fall into, uh, into this oppressive state uh, where we want to be in a righteous and a just state. Lacking justice also, again, specifically undermines your respect and your credibility. If you don't have any justice, don't struggle to inspire people and guide them effectively. This is going to uh, put your, your, your uh, reputation in the dumpers. People are going to see you as biased. They're going to see you as self-serving and they're going to, lose that trust in your authority and eventually strip you of, of, of your position and find somebody else to follow. Not that we should be out there just trying to exert our will, will on other people. But if you are in charge of a group of people and they see that you're not trustworthy, good luck getting stuff done. Good luck getting stuff done efficiently. Low morale, decreased productivity. If you're in, in, at work in your personal relationships, conflicts, lack, lack of mutual respect. When people don't trust one another, that's when the, when the fights start. 
the absence of justice leaves individuals and communities vulnerable to corruption and abuse. Some other leader is going to pop up and say, oh, yeah, I'll take care of you guys. I'll make sure everything's good to go. When in actuality, they've got ulterior motives, but they know that you're looking for a leader. And they'll say all the sweet things to try to get you to listen to them. And maybe you will at one point, but the next you know, you're trapped. Now what do you do? you got to fight your way out of it sometimes. Usually at the ballot box. Historically, at the end of a sort. Without a commitment to fairness and integrity, individuals are more likely to engage in corrupt practices and unethical behavior. They're not going to treat each other fairly. They're going to do stuff behind each other's backs. You're going to fall into just a, a fallen society. You're going to start seeing tent cities. You're going to start seeing corruption. You're going to start seeing this, these broken windows um, in the cities. It's just it, you, you start seeing it slowly turn from colorful to, color to gray. Psalm 82, three, three to four calls for justice. Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. In that specific verse, he's talking to the regions of the nations, people who are in charge. This is what you were called to do, but you did not do it. And you will be punished accordingly. At the end of that that uh, that section, Psalm 82, he talks to the angels who, who rebelled him. basically saying, you're going to die like men. Because you did not do what you were supposed to do. You did not defend the weak and the fathers. You did not uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. You did not rescue the weak and the needy. And you did not deliver them from the hand of the wicked. All these things are what you need to do in order to live a just life. To, to uh, take care of your little sphere of influence. Whether you're the president of a, of a nation or you're just a father in your house. And you're not just a father. That's one of the most important roles you can be. More important than the president in my opinion. Because you have direct influence over somebody to put your mark in the world. To put them out and be a good citizen. The president's just a figurehead. You as a father or as a mother are more important than you give yourself credit for. So what is oppression? Okay, we've talked about justice. The opposite would be oppression. In a stark contrast, it's unjust or cruel exercise of authority or power. It involves subjugation. It involves exploitation. It, it leads to inequality. It leads to suffering, ultimately. It can manifest in many forms. It can be discrimination. It can be prejudice. It can be just abuses of power. How many political officials have you seen either, have either been blackmailed, have been caught doing money laundering, insider trading, the embezzling funds, abusing campaign finances, and things like that? Why are these people in office? Did nobody check, do a background check on them beforehand? It's because people go off of equity and not off of equality, equal, equal opportunity, and, and a merit-based society. You get people in office that all of a sudden they have power and they don't know how to handle it and they abuse it. Because they've got handlers behind the scenes that are, that are kind of coaching them up who you'll never know their names, but you're propped up as, as the front man. Next thing you know, you get messed up, you get taken out of spotlight. They'll just replace you like that. Okay? Because the special interest groups and things that are out there, they're the ones that are lobbying for all these different things instead of the, the, the representatives really representing the people. Okay? This is not a political podcast, but just look around you. This is what's going on. Oppression is marked by an imbalance of power. People in positions of authority, they use their power to dominate and to control others, often for their own benefit. If left unchecked, the, dom the domination can be physical. It can end up being emotional, economic, or even social. Ecclesiastes 4.1 says, Again, I looked and saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of the oppressors, and they have no comforter. This is the sorrow that comes from oppression. Oppression is also characterized by the lack of respect and dignity or the worth of the individuals. Oppressors dehumanize their victims, treating them as objects rather than people. And this dehumanization can often lead to a cycle of violence and abuse. Because when you see yourself that high above somebody else, you have no problem walking all over them. You have no problem asserting your authority. You have no problem just exploiting them for, for personal gain. This is why you have to live a just life. Because you have to check that. Put these people in check. Drive it out. It has no place in, in, in a, in a uh, well-oiled, well-run society. That's got to go to the wayside. Living a life of, impression, of oppression inevitably results in negative consequences. The immediate effect is people experience pain. They experience fear. They experience, experience a lack of freedom. While the oppressors develop a hardened conscience and a distorted sense of morality, they think their way is right. They think inflicting pain is the right way to go by leading by fear, leading uh, by by. Uh, servitude basically by by coercion puts the elevates them of course they're living a cush life because they're walking on the backs of other people instead of being true leaders and being filled with justice and all these other virtues we've talked about over the past three weeks james 5 1 through 6 it warns the oppressors of their fate though now listen you rich people weep and wail because of the misery that is coming to you your wealth is rotted and moths have eaten your clothes your gold and silver are corroded 
Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not, oppose, uh, who was not opposing you. He's letting them know that their time will come because at some point the people get tired of it and the Lord will deliver the people. Whether in ancient times, sometimes it was sending another civilization in to come wipe out the people who were oppressing, especially specifically the Israelites, especially the wicked Israelites that were ruling over the generally good people. Um, obviously, there was a lot of rampant idolatry and stuff like that, but the righteous were suffering under all that. The Lord came in and wiped a bunch of them out so they almost hit the reset button. It happens. Sometimes you got to take take things back by force. Most of the times you can really talk it out. When somebody starts getting a little bit of a power trip, you check them real quick, not hit them, but just, hey, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? We're all in this this, this boat together. You, you, don't, you don't own me. Get out of here with that stuff. Okay? Live a life of justice. Teach your kids to stand firm on, on, on their two feet and to, and to stand against oppression and tyranny. Okay? Social division and conflict, this balance of power and inequality, it leads to resentment and, re and rebellion. If you're truly oppressing your people to the point where they can't, they can't take anymore. They will eventually realize that there's more of them than there are of you. They're going to revolt. It could get nasty. It could get bloody. This is why we don't want to steer into a life of oppression. Use your, be just, be firm, be fair, lead people with authority if you are given it. But don't be to the point where they feel like they have to rebel against you and overthrow you because you have found yourself uh, in, in this, in this, deep-rooted oppression instead of being a just and righteous person. An oppressor, your character is going to erode. When you constantly exercise unjust power and exploit others, you're not going to be as empathetic and you're not going to be compassionate at all. Part of being a good leader is to emphasize with people and have compassion for them. But you still have to be firm and fair. You have to, some people are going to come up and cry and boo-hoo and all these things. When it's just an act, it's just a front. You have to be wise. You have to be discerning. You have to Take, just like Solomon, take in all the information and sift out what the truth actually is. Because it's always this side, this side. But the third and, and most important thing is the truth. Over time, this lack of empathy and compassion, it, it leads to a hardened heart. And your integrity, your moral integrity just erodes completely. Proverbs 14, 31 states, Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker. But whoever is kind to the needy honors God. So in that verse, we obviously see that. It is honoring to God. It is pleasing to God when you are just, when you help the needy, when you're kind. Not just always giving the, the homeless guy on the corner a dollar. Hey, man, can I get you a sandwich? Can I help you with a resume? Is there any kind of anything we can do that really gets you off this corner? Because I see you here all the time. That's taking the next step. If you just show contempt, uh, when you show contempt for the Lord when you oppress the poor constantly and exploit them. A life led by oppression results in missed opportunities. Missed opportunities for growth and improvement. Oppressors fail to recognize the potential uh, potential contributions. Yeah. Oppressors fail to recognize the potential contributions of those they oppress. This leads to a lack of innovation and progress. It results in stagnation. If you have a whole group, you're trying to move forward. If you're constantly beating them down, they'll never exercise their full potential. That's why an authoritarian leadership style in a, in a group like the military doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to exercise authority, get them to do what they're supposed to do. But if you don't switch at some point to a more servant type leadership and, and a more autonomous style, style of leadership where I can um, literally say, I delegate my authority. Hey, I need you guys to get this done. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but I need it done. That lets them be creative, makes them be innovative. You know, Lance Corporal Engineering is a real thing. You, you tell a bunch of Lance Corporals to get something done, they'll get it done. It may not be in the way you would necessarily do it, but if it meets the commander's instinct, hey, we did it, okay? Now, sometimes people have to do something a specific way. If you're working on a, in a vehicle, for example, in an on a, in a assembly line, things have to be the same because you're, you're, you've got to have the same product. And the quality has got to be the same over and over again. But if it's a task and I just need to get it done, hey, lift this rock up that hill. I don't care how you do it. Well, maybe we turn it into a bunch of little bitty rocks and put it in our packs, even it out distributely and get this just evenly distribute it in the packs and take it up the hill. That's a smart way to do it. Or you get two guys to carry it up a little bit. They pass it to the next two guys to carry it up a little bit, whatever. As long as that rock gets to the top, I don't care how it gets done. Does that make sense? But you're going to keep people stagnant if you always tell them to do it the, the same way over and over again. And if you're always oppressing them, say, no, knocking the rock out of the hand, sending it back to the bottom of the hill, make them do it over and over and over again. They're eventually going to just be demoralized and not do what you need them to do anyways. Okay. Proverbs 29, 7. 
the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. This verse again underscores the importance of justice and maintaining your integrity and your faithfulness to your to your the people you're in charge of. Because if you don't have the integrity, you're going to end up being perceived as dishonest. You may lead into it a dishonest or a dishonest or unethical life, and that's going to just erode your credibility. We don't need that. So let's compare and contrast a little bit. We've already talked about it a little bit, but let's talk about uh, justice specifically. Promote stability. It's a foundation of stability and balance in one's uh, life and society. It ensures individuals are treated fairly and given their due rights, creating that environment of trust and cooperation. Stability is evident in all areas of life, again, from your personal to your, to your professional life, um, and even into economic and political systems. Isaiah 32, 17, the fruit of that righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. If you have this stability, have this justice, the fruit of, of your of your labor is going to end up being peace at the end of the day because you have brought order to the chaos, driven it out. Now you have a peaceful existence. In contrast, oppression leads to instability and to chaos. There is no peace in chaos. Exercising power unjustly, you're going to have resentment, you're going to have rebellion, you're going to have fights, you're going to have uh, social unrest, conflict constantly. People who are living in a life of oppression, they're just unprepared for challenges they face because they're so demoralized they don't know how to get out of the rut. Because their, their leaders have beat them down. We want to help people grow. And that's what the next point is. Justice fosters growth. It ensures individuals have the opportunity to reach that full potential. Because when you uh, allow them a, to live freely and to protect them, now they can be innovative. They can make things more, um, not convenient, but they can make things more efficient in society. And you'll find that late, later on down the road, you've got this well-oiled machine. And there's a lot more peace and less chaos because people have the opportunity to be heard. They have the opportunity to work. They have the opportunity to be free. But once people start getting oppressed, that's where conflict comes in. Proverbs 29, 14, if a king judges the poor with fairness, his throne will be established forever. Kind of makes a good point, a good case for a theocratic monarchy, in my opinion, but we'll get there one day. Oppression, on the other hand, hinders growth. It prevents people uh, from, from budding and developing into uh, the, the, the wonderful humans that we were designed to be. But if you're constantly beat down, you're constantly being pruned, you're constantly being told you can't do something, you're going you're gonna to find stagnation and society won't progress. It'll regress. Justice, it earns respect. When you act justly and treat others fairly and, are, and, and you uh, have that integrity, you're going to be admired as a leader. Your moral strength and ethical behavior, this cons and if you're consistent, not just showboating, if you're consistent with these these thoughtful actions if you, and you earn the trust of your people and they see that you're the same way on camera and off camera, you're the same way in front of the battalion commander as you are in front of the PFC that just checked in on deck, that consistency is going to, again, establish that throne forever, right? Um, people are going to want to work for you. They're going to want to follow you. They're going to want to lead your children. If you were living a just life, you can instill that into your children. They will go forth and be great leaders in their realm, whatever that might be, because they, they have that foundation of justice and fairness, and they'll know how to lead people. Proverbs 21, 15, when justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to the evildoers. When you exercise justice, when somebody commits a crime and you hold them accountable to that, and you give them the punishment that is due, it's going to strike terror to the evildoers, the ones that might want to do that crime again. That's why justice must be delivered in a swift and certain way. You have to uh, exercise justice, and people have to know there are negative consequences to their negative actions. Just like there should be positive consequences for positive actions. But if somebody does something so heinous, they need to be held to account very quickly, and it needs to be dealt with immediately. Because once you drag things out and you make, make the punishment not that bad, you're going to find that evil is going to continue to run rampant. But if you squash it in a, in a bud right there as it happens, correct the behavior there in the incident. That, that you find it, society's going to run smoothly. And those evildoers are going to be struck with terror because they know that if something, if they do something wrong, depends on what the severity of it, right? Capital punishment, corporal punishment, solitary confinement, community service, whatever it might be, but it needs to be dealt with right now. Oppression, again, leads to that loss of respect. Uh, their unjust and self-serving actions undermines their authority and integrity. That loss of respect and trust you're just going to let evil run rampant because, oh, yeah, it's just fine. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Let them just, it's okay. They stole $1,000 from a shop. It's nine nine hundred ninety nine dollars 
the, the thousand dollar cap. They, they, it's, it's fine. Just let it happen. If you encourage that kind of behavior and don't stop it, what else are they doing in this reckless type of behavior? I'm talking about looters and rioters and things like that. If it's not checked and squashed, people are going to, excuse me, people are going to feel unsafe and they're not going to want to, uh, to be in that community. They're going to find other places to go that will be accepting and will be more safe and will be more just. And that what is left is going to devolve into chaos. Look around the world, look around the country. It's not hard to spot. Obviously, to kind of to kind of wind down your faith is going to help you cultivate justice. Faith is that source of strength that's going to help you be just. Philippians 4.13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Faith is going to be that uh, guiding moral compass that helps you put all of these virtues into action and have the courage to put it out there. Okay? Faith and justice are deeply connected. Micah 6.8, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? Just to act justly and love mercy and to walk humbly with the Lord your God. Justice, true justice, is rooted in a relationship with God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. For a very long time, Christian writers have emphasized the importance of faith in cultivating justice. Martin Luther King Jr. in his letter from Birmingham jail writes, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one affects all indirectly. Talk about second and third order effects of things. Justice is essential for the well-being of all individuals, and true justice is rooted in faith and a commitment to God's principles. If you are just to the person on the corner, I, I had an incident, not an incident, uh, on the job site not that long ago. We had a really hard-working uh, guy. We had an install. We knocked it out of the park. And he said, hey, look, if there's any other uh, installs like this, I would love to, love to be there. Can you put in a good word for me? I was like, listen, you've done a fantastic job. I'll do more than a good word. I'll make sure you're on that next site. Okay, come to the next install. There he is, and he's ready to rock and roll. He, he's, he crushed it again on the second second uh, install. And I saw him. He's on a different shift than me. He comes up to me. He says, man, I appreciate you putting in a good work. I said, I appreciate your hard work and your effort. You literally busted your hump, and we got, got this job done. And I hope to see you on the next one, and we will. Because I know that they, I think they offered him uh, not necessarily a full time position or something like that. But they offered him uh, just just more work, and he said I could have gone home and cried because this is exactly what I needed for my family. When you reward hard work and you punish wickedness, it makes society work even more. It makes society work more efficiently because you can you can you know it without a doubt there are consequences for your actions, whether positive or negative. Obviously, criticize in private, praise in public. Uh, Criticize in private, praise in public. But if you work hard quietly, you're going to be rewarded for it. If you do evil silently in the, in the darkness, it will come to light and it will be punished. And it's up to us to hold people to account when they do things against our fellow men. So always treat others fairly. Stand up for what is right. Seek accountability everywhere that you can. Within yourself, to the Lord, to those around you. If you're on a team, you want to hold your person to your left and to your right accountable. Make sure that they're always doing the right thing, even when nobody's looking. Not for for accolade or praises or anything like that, just because it's the right thing to do. People will notice, I promise you. It may not be in the instant that you do it, but somebody sees it and gets word to somebody else, hey, they're doing the right things. Let's take care of these guys. Always reflect and learn on your experiences, from your successes, from your failures. Think about what worked and what didn't work. Put that into practice. If you had something that backfired, maybe you made a decision, you were trying to be just and it backfired, didn't work out how you needed it to. Next time you get in that same situation, try the other thing. Figure out what works to be the most efficient that you, that you can be. Instill this in your kids. Promote equality. Pr promote fairness. Not that everyone is equal, but everybody has an equal opportunity, if that makes sense. I can't play basketball. I'll never pretend to play basketball. I can't walk on the court and say, hey, put me in, coach. I'm going to dunk it on this because I can't do it. Equity, equity would say, put put him in, give him, you know, let let him play. Intelligence would say, get that kid off the court. He has no business being on the court. But if I work hard and train, have a fair shot like everybody else, and I prove myself, put me on the court. I'm never going to dunk it, but I'll I'll shoot threes all day long. Okay. Promote that equality. Give people an equal chance. Give them a fair shot, but off of their own merit and their own hard work. So to conclude, justice. Vital masculine virtue. It shapes your character. It's going, to, it's going to shape your decisions. It's going to shape your life path. It provides that foundation of moral integrity, ethical behavior. It's going to foster your personal and professional growth. It's going to foster your societal growth. It's going to maintain a healthy relationship. On the flip side of that, the lack of justice, which is oppression, 
It leads to instability, missed opportunities, and compromised character. Faith is this crucial role in developing and maintaining justice. It offers strength, guidance, and a sense of purpose. It enables us to navigate life's challenges and decisions with resilience and with discernment. When we treat others fairly, we stand up for what is right. We seek accountability. We reflect on our experiences and we promote equality and fairness. We can cultivate and apply justice in all aspects of our life. Again, this book, The Intentional Father by John Tyson. Right here. Pick it up. Read it. Okay. The role of your father. It's ground. It, it, it's rooted in putting justice into place and instilling this in your child. Promoting fairness and integrity. Doing the right thing when nobody's looking. Teaching them faith. Helping them learn. Help them equip them for life and give them a life of purpose. Enduring strength and integrity. Okay. Just to, to repeat Micah 6, 8, because that's a very important verse for this, uh, this topic. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Putting this verse into practice, it really illustrates the true nature of justice. It urges us to pursue it with all of our might because it is the bedrock of a, of a life well lived and a character well formed that we might walk humbly with our Lord all the days of our life. That's all I got for you guys this week. I'm Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobin Day of the Motivator. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning into the Three Pillars Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little segment, this little uh, series, I guess we could call it, on virtues. Definitely pick up the book. It's, it's phenomenal read. Um, you can find it about anywhere books are sold. All right. I got to return this back to my pastor now because he, he let me borrow. Shout out to Clark Chilton, my man. Please share the show. Share it right now. If you like it, go into Good Pods right now. Leave us a rating. If you like it right now, go into Spotify or Amazon or Apple. Wherever you can leave a rating, please do that. Share it with your friends. I, I really hope from the bottom of my heart that you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below, wherever you're watching or listening to this. Uh, check out the Three Plus Podcast website. I had a brain fart there for a second. Uh, we're going to end with a quick word of prayer, as always, and kick you guys out for a fantastic weekend. I'm starving. I'm going to get something to eat. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Carry on. Let us pray. Father God, Lord of mercy, just, just everything is right, true, and just about you. We want to emulate that in our lives. We know we're perfect. We know we're, we're fallible creatures, but you, the infallible one, the great I am, teach us to be just. Teach us to be merciful. Teach us to walk your path, to defend the, the needy, to drive out wickedness and to drive out oppression in the land. Use us as vessels, Lord. Fill us up with your with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with strength. Fill us with faith that is beyond any understanding and help us to put these virtues into practice every single day of our lives. Lord, I ask that you bless anybody tuning into this. Keep them in peace and strength and let them lead lives that are just and, and full of integrity for you. Lord, I ask this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. That's all I got for you all. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. Until next time, Tobinator.